Now we will see curvilinear motion, which is part of the dynamics. Already we have learned what are the variables in rectilinear motion. First of all, what is the basic difference between curvilinear motion and rectilinear motion? Whenever a particle is moving along a straight line, it is considered as a rectilinear motion. And when a particle moving along a curvature performing a circular path, then it is considered as curvilinear motion. In rectilinear motion, either the motion of the particle will be along horizontal direction or vertical direction or along a particular line. Means, for example, if particle starting from point A is moving towards the right direction, for a particular distance from T equal to 0 to T equal to T, slowly this particle is changing its position moving towards right. In this case, if we will describe the motion of this particle A in coordinate system, only x coordinate is changing. Assume that if the reference axis is x and y, the reference axis motion is given. So we can see that the particle moving along its line mo moving towards a right world, the coordinates at all the points is changing only for x. If here the value of the coordinate is 2, here 4, 2, 4, 6, 8, then at each point the y coordinate of the particle, the position is constant and there is change only in x coordinate. Similarly, if another particle b either moving in upward direction, we can say that here when particle is moving in upward direction along a line, only y coordinate is changing for the position x coordinate in this From this example, we can conclude that in rectilinear motion, if some reference axis is fixed, the displacement is only in a single direction. Or the position of the particle is changing only in a single direction. And we know that the change in displacement for particular time a change in position for particular time is displacement. The rate of change of displacement is velocity. So, when the displacement is in single direction, the velocity is also acting in single direction. Velocity is directly interrelated with displacement. Displacement is in x direction, that's why velocity is in x direction. And if velocity is in x direction or in a single direction, then ultimately the acceleration of the particle is also in single direction because acceleration is rate of change of velocity. Displacement, velocity, acceleration, they are interrelated with each other. One quantity is in single direction, then ultimately other quantities are also in same direction. They will not change the direction of the direction and along a line on which particle is. In both the cases, if displacement is in y direction, already we have seen the motion under gravity. In that, we are considering only the vertical direction, moment along the vertical direction. So, acceleration becomes acceleration due to gravity. But this displacement is always in vertical direction. Whether it is velocity, it is also in the direction in vertical direction. And acceleration is ultimately in, in the case of the motion under gravity. The acceleration becomes acceleration due to gravity, which is always acting in vertical direction. 
So, in general, in rectilinear motion, the displacement position, velocity, acceleration are along the same line. And ultimately, the other coordinate becomes zero because there is no change. But in collinear motion, what is actually happening? In collinear motion, what is that? It is the center of the curvature of the path about which the particle is moving from position A, B, C. And if you will decide the axis X and Y, then you can see from the motion of this particle that each for each time frame both coordinate x and y are changing x and y are changing what it means it means that during the collinear motion x coordinate and y coordinate both are variable both are variable means a curvilinear motion is a combination of the motion along two direction it is a combined effect of horizontal displacement and vertical displacement it is a combined effect of horizontal displacement and vertical displacement because the position of the particle is changing in both the direction horizontal and vertical horizontal and vertical so in curvilinear motion as this curvilinear motion is having variables in two directions that's why we have to consider the velocity in two directions acceleration in two, two directions and displacement if direction is decided accordingly with reference to uh, axis we have to calculate the displacement of the object so to describe the collinear motion there are coordinate system so we will see first the first coordinate system which is called as rectangular coordinate system first coordinate system which is called as rectangular coordinate system rectangular coordinate system this system is very simple as it is composed of our general coordinate system x and y means assume that a particle is moving from position A to B A to B performing a curved path moving along a curvature so the position of this particle can be described with the help of the position vector R bar equal to x i plus y j where i and j are we know that in vector we already learned in earlier classes i and j are unit vector in x and y direction respectively and x and y are the coordinates of that unit vector so the position of the particle is we can write the position of the particle particle is given by x i plus y j and we know that the rate of change of rate of change of position the displacement position for particular instant of the time is x i plus y j if i need to find the velocity with the help of this vector then velocity equal to rate of change of position dr by dt dr by dt I will put here the value of R D by D T of x i plus y j x i plus y j. Therefore, velocity v equal to d x by d t i plus d y by d t j. What is this d x by d t? D x is horizontal displacement. X is horizontal displacement. This dx by dt is horizontal component of the velocity. Horizontal component of horizontal component of velocity and dy by dt is vertical component of the velocity. And horizontal and vertical components are perpendicular to each other. 
This equation I can write here v equal to v x i plus v y j, where v x v x is equal to d x by dt and v y is equal to d y dt. As we know that in rectangular coordinate system x and y are perpendicular to each other. If I require to find what is the magnitude of velocity v, then whenever two vector quantities are perpendicular to each other, v x square plus v y square, v equal to v x square plus v y square. If direction is required theta v, then it is tan inverse mod of v y divided by v x. Tan inverse mod of v y divided by Vx. So with the help of this, we can find the direction of the velocity as well as magnitude. Direction we will get from this formula theta v equal to tan inverse mod of v by divided by Vx and magnitude we will get from v equal to the root of Vx square plus Vy square. Similarly, if I require acceleration e bar equal to, it is already known to us, dy by dt, v is what? v is d by dt of vx i plus vy j. Therefore, we will expand it d by dt of vx i plus d dy by dt of j. What is this? It is the horizontal component of the acceleration. Horizontal component of the acceleration. Why? Because the weight of change of velocity is acceleration. This equation will be modified as a bar equal to a x i plus similarly d y by dt d y d d y by dt is derivative of rate of change of vertical component of the velocity. That's why it is vertical acceleration a y. The equation of acceleration is a bar equal to a x i plus a y j, where a x is equal to d v x by d and a y is equal to d v y by d. Horizontal component of acceleration and horizontal component of acceleration. If I require total magnitude of the acceleration a, then we know that a x square equals a y square. This is the formula. So, in brief, in the rectangular coordinate system, velocity v is given by velocity v is given by v equal to d x by d t i plus d y by d t j, where d x by d t is horizontal component of velocity dy by dt is vertical component of the velocity if magnitude is required v equal to the root of vx square plus vy square if direction is required theta v is equal to tan inverse vy by vx it must be not we know that the acceleration is rate of change of velocity so a equal to dv by dt but from equation 1 we will write equation 1 from equation 1, v is v x i plus v y j. I put here d by dt v x i plus v y j. I will differentiate d v x by dt d v y by dt. This is the rate of change of horizontal component of the velocity, which is horizontal component of acceleration a x. This is rate of change of vertical component of velocity, which is equal to vertical component of acceleration. If I require magnitude of acceleration a, a equal to root of a x square plus a y square. These are the important formula. We have to remember uh, v equal to uh, v equal to d x by d t i plus d y by d t j, v equal to v x i plus v y j. We how to calculate the magnitude all these formulas are The rectangular coordinate system is very famous, very easy. If one variable is given, then we can easily find the other variable with the help of these formulas.
depending upon the conditions given in the problem statement, we have to consider the formula and accordingly we have to apply it. It is very simple. If acceleration is given, if acceleration is given in horizontal and vertical direction, either in one direction or two direction, and velocity d to one, then for finding the velocity, I would integrate the equation of acceleration. If velocity is given, displacement I am required to find, then I will integrate the velocity equation, so I will get displacement. Reverse you can think, if displacement is given in x and y direction, and we need to find the velocity in x and y direction or um, combining the magnitude of velocity, then I will take the derivative, derivative of displacement equation. Then after the differentiation, I will get the equation of velocity. From that equation of velocity, if again I will take differentiation, it will give you the equation of acceleration. These are the uh, connectivity. If displacement is given, differentiate it, you will get velocity. Velocity is known, differentiate it, you will get the acceleration. If acceleration is given, we require velocity integrated. Velocity is known, we require displacement again integrated. So in uh, the rectangular quadrant system, it is very easy to understand. Now there is one another quadrant system. That is called a normal tangential system. Normal tangential system. In normal tangential system, we are describing the position of a particle along normal component and tangential component. And this normal and tangential component system is applied whenever the path of the moving particle along a curved line is known. The path of the, what I am saying, the path of the moving particle along a curve is known. Means we can describe, path is known, then we can describe the position of the particle for particular instant in terms of its normal component and tangential component. It is very easy. Means we will uh, split the vector in normal direction and tangential direction. Normal direction and tangential direction. But you can see that if of a particular instant for path is known, always the object performing for object moving is in tangential direction. Because the direction in which the displacement is taking place, it is in tangential of that uh, velocity for that instant. Means here you can say here if I will draw the tangent, there is a no movement in normal direction towards the center of the curvature. Towards the center of the curvature. Like we will at all the points it is in tangential direction. At all the points, it is in tangential direction. That's why the velocity in tangential direction, velocity in tangential direction is velocity itself. Again, I'm agreeing. Means in normal tangential direction, the velocity is always in tangential direction. Means whatever the component in tangential direction, it is always equal to total velocity of the object, total velocity of the object and Vn, the normal component of the velocity in that case is 0, the normal component of the velocity is 0. No need to resolve, in this case, if you know the, if, if I know that, what is the value of velocity in, what is the value of the velocity, it is always equal to tangential velocity. Because in normal tangential component system, there is a no displacement in normal direction. 
that's why the component of the velocity in normal direction is always zero always zero vt vt equal to v and vn equal to zero same if we go for the acceleration we know that the acceleration of the particle the acceleration of the particle is rate of change of velocity therefore if i want to find the tangential acceleration at then it must be equal to differentiation of tangential velocity dv by dt dv by dt but this tangential velocity is velocity itself therefore at is dv by dt at is dv by dt it is very important formula for finding tangential acceleration but a student can say that as normal component of the velocity is zero normal component of the velocity is zero therefore normal component of acceleration is also zero but it is wrong it is not zero you will say why we know that there is one mathematical expression to get the value of formula for Normal component of the normal acceleration, but I will not go uh, for that expression. I will just uh, what is the concept behind that? We know that whenever a particle is moving along a curvature, means moving along a curve line, there are some forces which are acting on the object. The very important force is centripetal force, and another very important, very very important force is centrifugal force. and centrifugal force is given by f f centrifugal fc equal to m v square by r m v square by r what is this v square by r it is the acceleration it is the acceleration because according to newton's second law of mathematical expression f equal to m a and this a is equal to here A is equal to B square by rho. It is acceleration, and this acceleration we know that the centrifugal force, centrifugal force is always along the center of curvature, and the component of the acceleration which is acting along the center of curvature is normal acceleration. That's why here A M equal to zero is wrong. And we have to consider value of centrifugal acceleration v square by why? Because in so many mechanics books we have used rho instead of r, the radius of the curvature. So to have a simplicity, or you uh, to avoid the confusion, I am also using the rho. Uh, a is equal to v square by rho. It is the formula for normal acceleration apart from the mathematical there is a mathematical expression to obtain the value of this a equal to v square by r but from the concept we can understand from where this value a m equal to v square by r so now the acceleration has two components one component first of all component is a t and second component is a m and both has the values so if i require total acceleration a then it must be a t square plus a x a t square plus a x these are the important formula for normal tangential coordinate system it is very easy. if velocity is given for particular instant then it is a tangential velocity because that normal component of the velocity is zero v is equal to zero v is equal to v acceleration a as two components that's why we have to split the acceleration also in normal and tangential at equal to dv by dt but vt is vt v itself vt tangential velocity is velocity itself that's why the formula will become A T equal to T by T. A T equal to T by T. And A M normal component of acceleration is V square by V 
experiment. If I require total acceleration, then total acceleration equal to a t square plus a m square. We are normal and tangential force system is required whenever in problem statement radius is required to find then you can use this expression because in rectangular coordinate system the radius which we uh, we are most in the r of the board radius is uh, there is no uh, formula in which rho or radius is present all are uh, interrelating that with uh, horizontal component and vertical component but when radius is required to find or we have to use the value of the radius then you can use this formula a n equal to v square by rho where rho is again I will write here where rho is this rho is radius of curvature radius of curvature you can use the r but to avoid the confusion I am also using the same notation as number of rows are using a n equal to v square by rho Total acceleration is equal to under root of a t square plus a x square. These are the very simple formulas, and depending upon the conditions given in the numericals, we have to use the formula. We will see the numericals on rectangular coordinate system, normal tangential coordinate system. Next slide. It is very.